In this video, I will present a dynamic spectrum access radio transmitter, which enables secondary users to establish data communication channels in vacant parts of the band traditionally used for FM radio broadcasting. In every country, the radio spectrum is managed by a spectrum regulator, who oversees the allocation and licensing of frequency channels to primary users, such as cell operators and TV broadcasters. Traditional allocation policies commonly see large bands of spectrum allocated for a particular type of use across a large geographical area, regardless of whether the primary users, the license holders, are actively using all of the channels in them in all locations. Additionally, primary users often choose not to make use of their license spectrum in areas where there is no business case for them to deploy their services. For example, there is often very poor cellular coverage in the countryside, despite operators owning licenses to transmit at these locations. For these reasons, spectral resources are often wasted. The spectrum is a non-depleting finite resource, so ideally it would be used as efficiently as possible. In recent years, a new complementary spectrum access technique has been developed to allow secondary users to operate in underutilised spectrum. Dynamic Spectrum Access, or DSA, is a method of spectrum sharing where secondary users are able to access the spectrum and establish communication channels on an unlicensed or light licensed basis. Subject to a new regulatory framework, DSA would see licensed primary users encouraged to share bands they are not using, allowing the spectrum to be used more efficiently. In our previous work, we developed a DSA radio which targets the FM radio band. The FM band spans between 88 and 108 MHz, and research has shown that a significant portion of the band will often be unallocated at any particular location. Signals broadcast at these frequencies have excellent propagation characteristics, when compared to the Wi-Fi band, for example, and they are able to diffract around objects such as hills and human-made structures and of high levels of penetration through buildings. For these reasons, the FM radio band should be considered a prime candidate for secondary user access for applications such as a citywide IoT network. The radio we developed was designed to be capable of automatically scanning the FM band, identifying available channels, and dynamically adjusting its output signal to mould itself around the FM radio primary users all in real time. It does this by reconfiguring its non-contiguous channel mask, and it uses guard bands to ensure that it will cause no audible interference to the FM radio stations. The radio uses a type of modulation called Filter Bank Multicarrier, FBMC. With this scheme, the communication channel is split up into a number of subchannels by a bank of filters. In our work, we use the FIDIAS filter, this scheme is well suited to dynamic spectrum applications because the filters ensure there is minimal out-of-band leakage. The next stage of the research was to target the design onto programmable software-defined radio hardware, enabling a practical RF coexistence investigation to take place. The radio chosen for this was the Zinc SDR, which comprises a Xilinx Zinc ZC706 development board and an analogue device's FMCOM's AD9364 radio front end. This radio platform features a targetable user logic area on the Zinx FPGA, connected inline as part of the transmit and receive paths. While there are some design constraints that must be followed, the user enjoys full flexibility when implementing a radio design in this area. Once the design was deployed to the radio hardware, a series of experiments were carried out to validate the design's DSA capabilities. Initially, we wanted to confirm that the design programmed on the Zinc SDR was functioning as expected. We could do this by performing a real-time simulation on the hardware. During the simulation, the transmitter would be subjected to recordings of real FM radio environments and the spectra of the output FBMC signals it generated could then be examined, allowing us to confirm that it was successfully reconfiguring its channel mask to protect the primary user signals. 
First, we had to acquire these FM radio environments. Portable spectrum harvesting equipment was assembled, and recordings of the FM spectrum were made in various locations around central Scotland, shown here on a map. We used a USRP B210 software-defined radio for this, connected to a laptop running Simulink. The USRP was tuned to the centre of the FM band, and the sampling rate configured to allow us to capture the whole of the band in one go. The samples were saved to the laptop, and these could later be used during the simulations. Back in the lab, the FM environment recordings were input in turn to the Zinc SDR. When the transmitter was enabled, it scanned the input FM spectrum, reconfigured its channel mask to suit, and began outputting its secondary user FBMC signal with spectral holes, all in the space of 0.33 seconds. There is a lot of things happening on the screen here. In the top left, there is a MATLAB Live script, which is used to program different FM environments onto the Zinc SDR using a drop down menu. In the top right, a Zinc SDR console window and the Simulink model running the Zinc SDR receiver. Finally, at the bottom, there are Simulink and Keithley Spectrum Analyzer windows. These are used to examine the spectra of the generated FBMC signals. Loading different FM environments into the transmit repeat register, it was clear that the radio was successfully detecting primary user signals and adapting its mask to mould around them. The radio was able to achieve a physical layer throughput rate of 5.5 megabits per second in the FM environment for Glasgow, the largest city in the country. In rural areas, where fewer stations were broadcast, throughput rates of 11.9 megabits per second were possible. While these rates would not be sufficient to stream 4K video, they would be more than enough for an IoT application. Next, an investigation was carried out to explore what guard band size would be required in order to prevent the secondary user interfering with the FM stations. The throughput achievable with the radio is linked to the number of active channels, and therefore the size of the frequency guard band used to protect the primary user signals. A narrower guard band will lead to higher throughput rates, however, reducing it could result in interference being caused to commercial off-the-shelf FM radio receivers. As it would not be legal with the current regulations to broadcast the FBMC signal on the RF spectrum, an old FM radio was sourced and modified. Its antenna was removed, and an RF connector was installed instead. This would allow us to transmit the FBMC signal directly into the FM receiver with the hardware configuration shown here. FBMC signals for various FM environments were generated on the Zinc SDR, and these were then captured and recorded using a USRP. Next, the signals were added to their respective FM environments, and the combined signals then rebroadcast into the FM receiver. Initial findings indicate that a guard band of 200 kHz either side of an active station would be sufficient, as with this value, no audible interference was detected on the retransmitted FM stations. Tuning to parts of the spectrum where the FBMC signal is broadcasting, a buzzing noise is heard from the FM receiver's speaker. Because the energy at these frequencies is considerably greater than the standard white noise floor normally found between FM stations, the buzzing noise is quite loud. The ultimate aim of this work was to develop a cognitive DSA radio that was able to automatically reconfigure its channel mask and transmit in empty channels of the FM radio band, whilst ensuring the protection of primary users. To achieve this goal, the radio must regularly receive and process the ambient FM radio environment, and update its mask as soon as changes are detected in the primary user spectrum. The targeted Zinc SDR design was modified so that live FM radio signals could be acquired from an antenna 
and fed into the module that reconfigures the channel mask. The radio is set to perform a new scan and generate a new mask once every second. This would permit near real-time reconfiguration of the FBMC signal's spectrum and allow for a more interactive test to be carried out. Once the modifications were complete, the radio was switched on in a room where it was possible to receive strong ambient FM radio signals. Immediately, the radio configured its mask to suit the ambient spectrum and began transmitting. Next, some handheld FM transmitters were activated in order to add more FM signals to the spectrum. Within a second, the FBMT signal adapted and new spectral holes appeared to protect these newly detected FM signals. The centre frequencies of the handheld transmitters were then varied. Shifting the carriers up and down through the FM band, the FBMC signal kept adapting. Spectral holes followed the FM carriers as they moved. Further tests were carried out for alternative FM radio environments. Live off-the-air tests were performed in different cities, and also the recorded FM environments from earlier on were retransmitted into the Zinc SDR using additional radio hardware. In all cases, the radio was found to be capable of adapting autonomously to keep primary user signals protected. Thanks for watching this video. If you are interested in learning more about the FBMC radio design or the Zinc SDR targeting process and would like to find out more, check out the papers listed in the video description.